Ramble. This episode of The Tripod is brought to you by DoorDash. Use code TRIPOD for 25% off your order of $15 or more. Thank you to Native, MeUndies, and Pretty Litter for sponsoring today's episode. Hey, Tripod listeners, a quick note before we get into the episode here. We recorded this episode right after the episode last week where Keith and Zach got stoned and played with Keith's synthesizer. Just to let you know, uh, we are editing out a large portion of the synthesizer in this episode due to just remarkable feedback (laughs) from the audience. So sometimes during this episode, the synthesizer will be muted, but we might be talking about it. And at other times, we just cut it out entirely. That's (laughs) That's <laughs> for massive requests from you guys. And we really hope you enjoy this episode. It is pretty wild. Enjoy. Welcome to another episode of The Tripod. We are a little stoned. It's just, I'm just not going to lie to you guys. I'm not going to try and hide it. I am not going to. I'm not going to sugarcoat it, okay? We just recorded an episode where Miles <laughs> decided to get us waked and baked. And I didn't object. I was quite delighted. Yeah. Here we are, and uh, you know Keith and I kind of forgot that there's a huge crew outside this door <laughs> you filming a scared? video. We open the door quite loudly. Uh, Ned is on camera with his wife. He tried to do a bit with us. We were not prepared for that. You know, sometimes you don't realize that you are in an altered state until you change. Yeah, you're like you stood up. Yeah, you stand up. We stood up, <laughs> and we stood up into a room of about twenty people. Yeah, uh, realizing that we're the boss. We and, you're, and you're stoned at work. And I'm stoned at work, and they don't know. It's a it's a little secret. <laughs> That's a good point. Did you tell Rachel? I didn't tell Rachel. Yeah. No, I, I, they did I, see me walk in earlier and grab weed sodas and say, <laughs> we're getting high in the podcast. <laughs> so I think they might, they should have an idea. What happens I didn't know that. Stays, it's sort of a, if this feels like an insular world. Yeah. yeah. I tried to not make eye contact with anyone. Yeah, that's uh-huh. fair. I'm not ashamed. I'm just a little bashful. <laughs> a part of me was just thinking, like, are they going to get mad that we're playing loud music in here? But we're all headphones <laughs> because there's no loud music out it's there. It's a silent disco in here, baby. Yeah. Now, this is also a little weird because you're not joining us. And I guess you shouldn't. Cause, no, I'm at work. Yeah, you're. <laughs> uh, but it, 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 yeah, yeah. It's a yeah. little sad. I know. I'm I've sorry. only, I think, gotten stoned with you once. That's probably and not true. really directly. It was your <laughs> was wedding. Was that my wedding? Yeah. yeah. But there was a joint at the after party <laughs> that was course, passed yeah. around. We shared a joint. That was, I think, like one of my favorite decisions we made was just to have a weed bar at the wedding. I loved it. Hi, Rachel. You're having too good of a time. I'm sorry, what? <gasps> and you're loud as fuck. Are we loud? <laughs> oh, okay. You're like, <laughs> okay. All right, maybe we should turn it down a okay, little bit. Okay, we'll turn it down <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> Does that mean that the whole first episode we were good boys and now suddenly we're maniacs? <laughs> Are you drinking weed soda? Rachel, you no. were. <laughs> it's 10 a.m. It is 10 a.m. almost 11. Yeah, well, almost. it was 10 a.m. when we started. I try to foster a creative environment. It wasn't. Yeah. I, I was peer pressure. It's not like this. I didn't choose this life. This life chose me. You're so stoned and loud and wearing that pretty this is what, this is the CEO right You're here. You're stoned and loud and wearing a crazy outfit. Okay, we'll said. keep it down. Not that oh, much, Ned. Ned. Not that much, Ned. Ned, 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 Ned. for a second. You might have to talk. I don't know if that mic's live, but maybe I it is. I can make it live. Give him headphones. <laughs> yeah, so Ariel's cooking. We're filming a date night episode right now. Hey, is Ned. This, uh, what's this? I'm playing with synthesizers. Oh, damn. <laughs> <laughs> Rachel, you got to feel this, though. This, these are some sick beats. Now, these are te- fire jams. Te- tell the most boring story you can and see how fucking dope it <laughs> okay. becomes immediately. Okay. So, you know, this one time, um, you know, one of my kids, I'll, I'll, I'll let you guess which one, was in the backyard and he wanted to dig uh, in dirt. Dirt. And then he did it. He d- he dug in dirt. He did it. He did it. He did a he really did it. really he big dirt it. hole. He did it. And he, he said, I, "I'm he digging all the way to he China." Did it. He did. And it. I wasn't he sure if that it. was problematic or not. I'm gonna go to China. <laughs> but it was true. Go to you know, if he dug I'm go straight to through the earth, he could have gone all the way to China. China. Kicked out. I'm going. Okay. I'm going to China. I'm going to China. Just turn it off. I'm going to China. Okay. Okay. Well, we'll stop the music. That was just all we needed for this episode. Oh, my God. I liked Ned's questioning of if saying digging a hole to China is problematic in the year 2022. That's funny. 
I don't think it is. It's wow, a good what question. an intro. It's a good question. What a crazy that, intro. This is going to be a hot app if that, that was any sign. That was fun. How did it sound? I wasn't listening. It sounded great. I just just announced. At some point, I'm going to get on there. I know yeah. you, you. Keith seems to think that mm-hmm. it's like enough is enough. I say no, sir. <laughs> you want to give them twice the... Hey, in case you didn't like the synthesizer in last week's episode. <laughs> Coming to this one. Oh, thinking, whenever that episode you, aired. Oh, yeah. That's a good point. We don't know. And we don't know. Sometimes they're next to each other. Sometimes they're not. For just audio listeners, there should have a big shoot outside. Rachel just came in because we were screaming over techno music. Sorry for party rocking. We're making content. We're making art. Yeah. yeah. Earlier I'm sorry. You that, think your art's more important than our art? <laughs> we had that conversation about <laughs> are we content. making art yeah. Oh, yeah. or garbage? <laughs> we just started trying to make art for once. <laughs> I, had a, I had a follow up to that, by the way. Art versus art versus content. That's what it was. Not garbage. <laughs> <laughs> garbage. I, I I had a follow up thought because there was a lot of great discourse shared by yeah. the commenters. Yeah. yeah. And I think part of the difference is intention. Uh-huh. Are you making your art with intention, or are you capturing content? Yeah. Do you capture it or just let it slip? <laughs> Yo. Whoa. <laughs> Miles, do you have the time? Do I have the time? Yeah. To listen to, to me, wine. Oh, I screamed to go. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we have to get into it. Now I have no idea. I'm sorry. I realized it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Rachel. I, Rachel, I realized it. I, yeah, I'm, I'm really I'm sorry. sorry. I'm really sorry, but it was it was green day. Turn the AC on in there. Get a general hum. Get a white noise to help wash us out. <laughs> well, maybe if they play the music out there, they won't be able to hear us. She was I'm, gone for three minutes. She was not you, gone. You long. literally screamed. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like we have a sleepover energy. We're it does feel this like, episode. Don't wake daddy. It does feel like mom has come in twice and saying it's 1 a.m. It's bit time. Please go to bed. <laughs> yeah. Are you guys stoned? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No, mommy. How stoned are you? Like not that high, but <laughs> high. I guess we're higher than we normally are. Higher than most people are at 10 a.m. <laughs> most people. This yeah. used to be so regular and I'm glad that it isn't. Yeah, but I, uh, you know, Sunday fun day. Mm. Sunday mm-hmm. fun day is all about the wake and bake. That's yeah, true. That's true. I used yeah, to live the weekend. At the, do you know the oak- are allowed to be are allowed to be? You can get high as long as you don't have any work to do. Yeah, <laughs> you can get high. That's my rule for the weekend. I you know like uh, the Oakwood apartments. Yeah, yeah, those are like the famous apartments that celebrities live in in L.A. Yeah, so here in Los Angeles, when you move to L.A., uh, a lot of child actors, mm-hmm. their first home is the Oakwoods. It's up in Burbank. They, they've they rebranded it, mm-hmm. so it's no longer the Oakwoods, but for mm-hmm. me, always the Oakwood. Sure. And they have a little general store, and it's like headshots of Raven Simone, and oh. and like, you know, like it's most of them, it's like the the third, like the little brother character on a Disney show. Mm-hmm. Like, it's like, oh, that guy, right? Anyway, when I first moved to LA, that was my first home. Oh, really? Uh, at the, my college dorm was in the Oakwoods, <laughs> and they had a Sunday buffet that I never once woke up for. It stopped at 10. I was never awake by 10. Ugh. But one friend would go down and get a donut, and then we would have a Sunday fun day where we, I don't know why we chose to do this. We would put the joint in the middle of the donut and all kind of pass around the donut joint, almost like we were smoking someone's butthole. Uh, and we would... <laughs> Is it a donut or a donut hole? No, it was a donut, but the donut has a hole right. in the middle. Oh, and so you would, you would in hold the hole, the joint. you put the joint... I see. Yeah. The, you the, smoke through the donut. Yes, yeah, so you smoke, take... Imagine and then you blow out taking the donut. the donut to your face yeah, I, and I, sucking on the hole. I'm there. But now... <laughs> yeah, you just... I'm there. I'm just, there. We would do that. And then at the end, we would all break the donut up and each have a bite. Ew. So here, but, well, isn't that like drinking eat, drinking bong water? But it was beautiful, Miles. It does feel culty. Yeah. Yeah, it does it feel culty. There's a cultiness to it. The and there's like cult. fun canyons there, so we would kind of climb over this fence and we were like overlooking yeah. the something. Whereas last week's episode was the drinking episode. This is going to be the weed episode. Last week's episode was pretty weedy. It was also weedy. <laughs> <laughs> this, one, this episode will just be called all lowercase. It kicked in. <laughs> <laughs> We had edibles an hour ago. <laughs> <And> they kicked <laughs> in for this. Um, that's fun, though. That's a cool little smoking journey. A little smoky journey. Yeah, I'm trying to think of like a, a smoky journey that I used to do. What we used to do in college, mm-hmm. we played a little game called shelf shoe golf. <laughs> I think I can. It's kind of it. like frolf, but instead of <laughs> throwing throw frisbee, you kick your shoe off <gasps> and hurl it across the quad with your foot. Question. Yeah. So. First hole or first swing, uh-huh. I, I throw my shoe off. I go to where my shoe was to uh-huh. collect it. I put it back on my foot and, and fling just, it again. Uh-huh. Yeah, you Brilliant. got it. Wait, you put it back. Wait, you put it back on your foot. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I missed that part of it. So instead so of you using start, your hands, you hold, it's more like it's more like half on. It's more it's like so- soccer meets. And frisbee. then you whip it as far as you can. 
and mm-hmm. you try to you basically you and your friends are like okay that tree over there you have to hit that tree and yeah, it's like, like you know 200 feet away I'm like okay well, so what do you think like par four yeah par miles four. do we have the ability to go mobile and go outside and play this right now while we record to play <laughs> it seems <wish>. tough <laughs> seems really tough but we can play it's a very fun game you get high and then you go and you, and we sometimes do it on the quad sometimes we do it just in the neighborhood near where we lived but yeah, we would just be, and one person did eventually get their shoe on top of a building. Wow. And I couldn't get that it back. Is tough. We had, we, we got up there. And people would see wow. Keith doing this on the quad and they'd say, hey, what you play in there? That's the and coolest guy say, here. Shelf. Shelf. And they go, what shelf? And it's you like, would say, it's like froth, but instead of throwing a frisbee, you kick your shoe off your foot. And they would say, well, I, hey, let me get a try at that. <laughs> they and would. Sure enough. They start playing and you fast forward a couple months. They had the biggest shelf league in all of North America until the Swedes found out. Oh, wow. and they There's came also in mini yeah. shelf, which is played indoors <laughs> with tinier feet. No, you just can't <laughs> hurl the fuck out of it because you're playing indoors. Uh, Keith, I so feel you like have you're, to you're measure sen- your tosses. Your sensibility really fits well with college lore. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, in fact, I had a ball pit in one of my yeah, dorm rooms that I walked around the quad kicking my shoe all over you're the like place. You're like a nerdy Van Wilder. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're very right. I'm very tame. Yeah. It's like, Today we're going out. We're causing fucking trouble. We're going to kick our shoes around. <laughs> the best part was that we had this big Liberty Bell-esque bell at mm. the top center of the quad. Mm-hmm. And no matter like where we started on the quad, the last hole would have to be hitting the bell. Yeah. But it didn't count unless the bell made a sound. Oh, that's nice. It had to go. So if you just graze the bells, like no, 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 <laughs> no, 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 you gotta <laughs> ring that bell. <laughs> I love little games like that. Yeah, and we played a lot of stupid little games like that. I played I, as a kid growing up because I was in the deep south and we didn't have much to do. I, I had lots of dumb mm. games that like we took a lacrosse ball mm-hmm. that I had bought, and of course because I was learning bounce juggling, which is where you juggle ball, three balls against the ground. Similar pattern as normal juggling, but different. But then we played it. it honestly, I guess maybe I had a shoe obsession because this we put shoes on our hands and played tennis but we oh. called it tennis shoe really very good. cute name that's very cute very and we, cute and we played and it was basically exactly like tennis but with more of a racquetball court size court no mm. net just but you had to hit it with a shoe <laughs> and you had to hit a racquetball yeah not a tennis ball oh yeah and i'm sorry is... no, it was a little cross ball those solid rubber balls oh yeah, those are fun balls yeah those are they hurt they hurt get they're, hitting they're... the balls with those balls ouch mm. I was just thinking about smoking journeys and I recall being when I was like young and maybe in high school, early high school, I went, my cousins would be like the best freaking smoke spot. We were in Long Island. It'd be like the best freaking smoke spot is in this gated community. <laughs> and we freaking know the passcode like for how to get in. And so we all would drive in these cars. They would like go like, beep, 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 like hitting the keypad. And we'd go in the gated community on the docks. That's and dope. That was the smoke spot. Love that. That's so much more dangerous. It, well, I know because there's like the security. <laughs> you're going into a place that you're not allowed to be. <laughs> a you don't place belong to do something you're not allowed to do. Yeah, exactly. I know. Yeah. yeah they're like, lo- <laughs> they would love to yeah, call the cops yeah. on some oh, fucking teenagers yeah. smoking weed. Absolutely. That would give them oh, the biggest <laughs> orgasm in the world. I, uh, <laughs> the consequences. At the end of my block growing up, yeah. I had an abandoned tennis court. It was That's one incredible. single court. So, so the wow. way that my, my road went, it's like, it, there, it, there wasn't really a through street, so there was a dead end at the very end. Uh. But the dead end was like a little nub, and then it turned right. <laughs> mm-hmm. And the little nub led up to one driveway up the hill, like this really nice house that was quite hidden. Yeah. And at the nub was this like overgrown tennis court. Like you kind of had to like climb through vines to get in. I don't know what property it belonged to. <sighs> the, it was the, the floor was cracked. You couldn't play tennis yeah. on it. It was fucked up. But it was a perfect place oh, yeah. to get high. And yeah. so we would be at my house. We would, you know, go uh-huh. to the tennis court. And then we, yeah, it's yeah, literally like great. the Lord song. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, I actually, what? well, I was going to tell a story about a bong, but I'm like, I don't want to tell people that I smoked out of a bong in high school. Yeah. Bong. Anyway, so I it had a bong. better for your lungs, though. That's true. Well, I mean, it's it better is. than fucking. Yeah. yeah. Well, like everyone was smoking Water. out of um, Coca-Cola can. Coca-Cola apples. can. Yeah. But there's no, you're not smoking out of a bong now. No, I can't do that anymore. I smoked out of a bong. You did last night. You really? So it was a little bong. It's too intense. I feel like a bong. If I saw a bong, I I think bongs should be illegal, but weed should be well, legal. 
I, this was like a very, it was more like a bubbler. Uh -huh. Yeah, but I'm it was picturing... technically a bubbler. No, it was not like a big ass, <laughs> yeah, like, like a with bar. a snake going up the side. <laughs> yeah. and like, yeah. We had that. And it was yeah. called. Oh, I, we had that in college. Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. We called ours the Milkman because it got so that's, Milky Way. That's hilarious. Uh, <laughs> ours was what? called, uh, I think it was called Blastoise. Don't tell me you wouldn't have had a stupid. Oh, don't tell me you would have had a stupid name for your pong. No, we had one that had an octopus on it. We called it the Octagon. That's pretty Hell good. Yeah, yeah that's cool. Uh, my bubbler was called Crazy Toilet. My, I like that. <laughs> it looked like a crazy looking toilet. We tried to give it a cooler name, but nah, it, that's what its name was. I had Michael yeah. Buble. That's a good one. Classic. Mm -hmm. I had Little Critter, but it broke after only having it for like a month. Somebody <sighs> broke it. Rest in peace, Little Critter. They bought me Crazy Toilet as a replacement. <laughs> No matter how many times I tell myself, every time I go to the store, seemingly, I forget that one thing that I forget to grab. Nothing is more annoying, but thanks to DoorDash, there is a solution. DoorDash connects you to the restaurants you love right now and right to your door. We all know that, but now you can also get the grocery essentials you need with DoorDash too. Get drinks, snacks, and other household items delivered in under an hour. Ordering is easy. You open the DoorDash app, choose what you want from where you want, and your items will be left safely outside your door with the contactless delivery drop-off setting. For a limited time, you guys can get 25% off and zero delivery fees on your first order of $15 or more when you download the DoorDash app and enter code TRIPOD. That's 25% off, up to a $10 value, and zero delivery fees on your first order when you download the DoorDash app in the App Store and enter code TRIPOD. Don't forget, that's code TRIPOD for 25% off your first order with DoorDash. Subject to change, terms apply. It's a new year and who doesn't want to make some easy changes to their personal hygiene routine to make it a little cleaner of a year. That's where Native comes in. Native's aluminum-free deodorant and body washes are never made with parabens or sulfates and are both cruelty-free. Beyond their customer favorite classic deodorant, Native also offers sensitive and plastic-free options, which is great for me. The sensitive formula is made without baking soda for those with more sensitive skin, and the packaging for their plastic-free deodorant is made of 100% paperboard. To kick off this new year, Native has partnered with Baked by Melissa with a collection of scents inspired by Baked by Melissa's delicious cupcake creations. Wow. You can choose from tie-dye vanilla cupcake, mint cookie cupcake, fresh peach cupcake, and my favorite, ginger lemonade cupcake to make your day a little sweeter. This year, up your personal hygiene routine with Native. Go to nativedo.com slash tryguys or use promo code try guys at checkout and get 20% off your first order. That's native deo.com slash try guys or use promo code try guys at checkout for 20% off your first order. One of my bulls name was Marvin. That's a good name. <laughs> That's good. There was a in the Boston Garden. There's a little plaque and it's called Marvin's room, I think, or maybe we just called it Marvin's room. I don't know, but that's the bowl. I believe we actually now that I think of it, I think we also had a bubbler for a while called Michael Buble. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. a good name for a bubbler. It's, it's, bubbler. it's a once it's a name that Michael once Bubler. you discover, you're like, well, I'm the funniest person who's ever uh, existed. It's obviously, the best name. <laughs> it's hilarious. <laughs> I crushed it. It's like you said, you had a story to share. I always have stories to share, Miles. <laughs> that's why we're here. Did you said a tennis court story. Was, no, you, you said wanna... I have two stories. Did said... you just secretly get high this morning before coming to work? And then you're like, <laughs> that would I gotta be really get these funny. Guys oh, fuck, high. I did get so tired. I, I think this. that your energy is so <laughs> chill and silly that it's like it's the synthesizers. It's the synthesizers. They put you in a certain me. mood. Um, but Zach, like you said you had two stories. I forget one. Yeah, that's cool. You got one though. You got well. So it's more of a thing on my mind. Okay, I could use some music. Nice. We got in trouble know. last time. <laughs> I'm not going to yell, Keith. Uh, well, we don't I'm know. I'm not going to yell. If the beats start fucking singing, though, <laughs> you're going to. I'm not going to. Let's play a different preset. Okay. The presets <laughs> they built are so much better than mine because they're fucking good at this. Oh. Yeah, this is good. This I'm going to cool. tell you what is I'm more likely to yell with the sound. <laughs> it's really cool. This is He's definitely the talks. worst of my two things that were on my mind. Oh, the worst? Yeah, but that's fine. You can't think of the better one. I can't remember it. So I really respect that TV shows these days are respecting our intelligence as viewers, yeah, you know, and like not that. giving us a previously on. Uh huh. But I do think sometimes they could assume I'm a little bit dumber than I am. I think so. 
Yeah, I, I've been watching that Euphoria. I haven't seen even the rest of season one, but I gotta get. Oh no, shit! And I loved the first four episodes. I just have to get back into it. It's sad. so much fucking in it. Lots uh, of fucking. Lots a lot of, of teens drugs. fucking. Lots that of is, teens. That's fucking. troubling. Um, yeah, I mean the first season was like feels like it was four years ago. I don't. Re- it was a, yeah two two years ago. Uh huh. And they just <laughs> dove right into season two, and I'm like, guys, I'm not that smart. I don't remember people's names. Oh, that's a good. It's point. been a long time. Yeah, and like. Someone did a thing to someone else, and I'm right. like, "What was their relationship?" Yeah. HBO treat right. me like a dummy. A Give me, point. I mean, like even binge TV shows have previously ons, but mm. not these days. I do love all the Euphoria High School uh, content where people are like, "If I went to Euphoria High School," or like the teachers at Euphoria High School. Yeah, it makes me laugh. That's my uh, my good buddy, do you remember Brock O'Hearn? I made this video with him back in the BuzzFeed days oh, where I, I, I recreated his Instagram man. photos, uh, the sexy Instagram photos. On Instagram, he's a, a big, uh, uh, muscly man with yeah. beautiful long hair. He looks like a real life Tarzan. Oh, uh, but he was in the second episode of Euphoria, which was oh. very exciting to see. And it's a fantasy sequence where he fucks one of the characters, and <laughs> they have a close up shot of his full erect penis. Oh my god! And no way! It is. I would have to imagine uh, fake. I believe I read all the penises are fake, which pff, lame. Uh, but it is just the biggest penis I've ever seen on TV. And so I texted him and I said, hey, man, way to go. Nice oh, dick, wow. bro. Nice dick, the, bro. You, this is so a big ass boner <laughs> on a TV show. Yeah. I was watching. So I don't watch There's the so show. many dicks in this season. So I don't watch the show. But I mm-hmm. watched one episode with Becky the other day. <clears throat> yeah, it's softcore porn. Oh, it is. Were you and watching it, from this season? It, no, it's porn. Yeah, it was the most recent episode. It was, I think. Yes. It's, it's yeah. pretty softcore. I was like, this, it started with like four minutes of like, well, this is It's a hard sex fucking, fantasy. This it's like a porn. surealist and it, sex and fantasy it like scene. And it was very porny positions. No, you that, can tell. <laughs> if you ask me. You no, know, I agree. It's porny. It was and intense. I and was it was like, our, this is what you watching? It was our guy from, from Kissin' Booth. Oh really? Oh, oh yeah. that's right, that guy. That guy. Yeah, Jacob Alordi. Yeah, he's like, watched him doing some hardcore fucking. Yeah, yeah. The fucking is a little, a little intense. For it me. upsets me too because uh, his character Nate is just horrible, the right? worst human on the planet. Yeah. But Jacob Alordi, great. I know now is a hottie, it's, it's and I hot. have con- conflicted feelings where mm. I am like, oh fuck, Nate's hot, but Nate's so bad. Mm. Yeah, he's hot. He's hot. It's hard to be hot and bad, Keith. Thank you. Um, I uh, agree. It's it's been tough for me, um, <laughs> but you know that's why boy. I really try to focus uh, in on something that does good for the world. That's right. Like making synthesizing music. Yeah, because I used to be like that kid who was just fucking disgracing the quad, <laughs> kicking his shoes all over it. Oh, you yeah. want to play? I want to okay, play. Well, it's plugged in over here, so you're gonna have to switch spots with me. Done. Putting Zach's earwax into your earwax. I cleaned it off real quick, but there wasn't any wax. He's not not a waxy boy. boy. I think I still have, since we did that earwax video, I think I still have uh, earwax in there. In your ear? Yeah. Yeah, you probably made more in the last three years. My roommate got, (laughs) that was like three years ago. Long time ago. Holy shit, that's crazy. It was our Jax Films collaboration. (laughs) Oh my God, I forgot who's in that. (laughs) And he just, he kind of just left because he didn't have any earwax. No, you're right. He's a clean eared boy. Yeah, it was uh, probably the worst video to ask him to be in. But it was so funny that he was in that one. Because <laughs> very briefly, because he's so funny and it's just a really funny cameo, in my opinion. It's like a cameo <laughs> rather than a guest spot. <laughs> he's in it for like five seconds. But uh, yeah, but I, my um, lovely roommate, Kendall, got one of those devices that is they're selling these on like Instagram and TikTok now that are ear picks and Whoa. they have cameras on them. Cool. So they're ear picks with cameras that connect to your phone and it Bluetooth sends the video of the inside of your ear, presumably so people can do their own earwax, but I feel like that feels so unsafe. You know what? Is it let more or less safe than blindly sticking a Q-tip into your ear? Probably more safe than that. So, so there you go. How much of the population is doing that? I did it this morning. Yeah, I, I do think that the blind every morning, the blind leading the toothpick is probably not good. Yeah. Well, not a, I would not use a toothpick. <laughs> what? Don't use a toothpick. I'm using a toothpick. No, no, Miles, no. Uh, this is intense. Yeah, I can't. I'm, I, everything really I do makes it faster. That one's really scary. <laughs> we do have a romantic question. <laughs> that is a nightmare. It's like, exactly. a, bunch. We got it's like a bunch of bugs. <laughs> this, this is like you keep coming in and out of a bar from the smoking section. You keep like walking in and out and it's like yeah, the door is open to the weird party <laughs> yeah. going on next door. 
Okay, so I funny. got a question here from somebody. <laughs> Yes, sir. It's yes, weirdly, sir. <laughs> it's really sort of similar to the last question. Okay, so much echo on that. Hey guys, <laughs> so some background information. This guy, we'll call him Turd, and I have known each other for a year and a half at university. Let's call him Turd. <laughs> <laughs> hey, naming people's our job. Yeah. He is now a senior. I am a junior. When we first met, I was in a long-term relationship, but I always felt like there was some weird energy between us. Real quick, time out. Should we yell one time, real quick, just so <laughs> Rachel comes in and then sees that we've switched spots and <laughs> not acknowledge it and be like, "What are you talking about, Rachel?" Like, there's just no way we aren't going to yell, and it's <laughs> going to happen. Naturally. We're going to yell at some point. She's going to come in and be mad. Okay. So, um, so what's up with turd? So he is now a senior in I'm college a junior. or high school. We for uh, college. Cool. Uh, at university. Grad cool. school. I'm a Thanks. junior. <laughs> when we first met, I was in a long term relationship, but I always felt like there was some weird energy between us. He was and still is my higher up slash boss within a very large school organization. Uh-oh. This organization is very important part of both of our lives. A year ago, I was debating going abroad or applying for the organization again. Have to reply, reapply every year. My boyfriend at the time told me it was stupid to try to advance in leadership in the club and that the other people in the organization were not good for me and were not good people. This hurt as these people were some of my closest friends. I talked to Turd about it and he told me I needed to make a decision for myself. Turd was sort of a mentor to me all last year. I don't like this guy. Turd or the boyfriend? Tur- turd. Who is the boyfriend? <laughs> no, Turd didn't tell her not that the people were toxic. Her boyfriend did. Oh, and the boyfriend is toxic. I talk. I talk. <laughs> She's... Keep going. It's Just so let like, it be. Let it happen, like, buddy. It really sounds like you're in a beehive, like an electronic beehive. Let me go back. My boyfriend at the time told me it was stupid to try to advance in leadership at the club and that other people in the organization were not good for me and were not good people. This turd, these people are some of my closest friends. I talked to Turd about it and he told me I needed to make a decision for myself. Turd was sort of a mentor uh, to me all last year and his advice was what led me to reapply. Uh, not go abroad and eventually break up with my ex-boyfriend. So turd is being like, you should break up with your ex. The organization is the most important thing. Don't study abroad. Yeah. And it's a lot of mixed feelings. There. That's a lot of direction. A lot of direction there. Uh, but he's a mentor. So yeah. In the last year, myself and turd have become extremely close, gone on dates, but have never addressed the strange relationship we have. seems like you're going on dates. Define date. I know. Over the summer, when we when he moved to the East Coast, we would FaceTime for hours daily. This last semester, Whoa. it's with him, and he's everything I'd ever want in a guy. However, he's one of the people that determines the executives for organization next year, like I said. So this is a huge part of my life, and I don't want to miss out on an opportunity I've earned because of the potential romance between us. But I don't want to wait till the end of the year to tell him how I feel because he'll be moving shortly after. I decay what to do. When should I tell him how I feel? So it seems like turd and her have some chemistry, but he's in a leadership position, but they've gone on dates. So it seems like they're already canoodle in the, the and now he's on the East coast. Yeah, but I think he's still like in school, in school or something. It sounds like they work for the university programming board. Well, yeah, I was gonna say where like that's a like the only organization that's a school organization that like has like a lot of leadership and that people who do that end up normally working that job at colleges. Like it actually yeah. is a way in college to just yeah. work toward your career right there. Sure. Is you work on that board and then you have a lot of experience doing that. Yeah. And then you apply to another college, be like, hey, I was on this board, right. so I know how to book acts. I can be in your entertainment mm-hmm. division and yeah. your activities division. So I get that's what I'm predicting it is. And if I'm right, then you guys should book Lou Berger to come <laughs> and play at your school. And when you bring us, that's going to put you in a leadership role because your whole school is going to go nuts because Keith right. Habersberger and his sexy synths Yo, are yeah. coming to your campus and he's going to kick his shoe all oh, over yeah. the place. Kind of <laughs> she just needs attacked. to just address. Oh, we're still talking about that turd <laughs> and ask turd. What yeah. are we? I think the turd needs to. Yeah. The question of whether you're around turd, what's turds deal? I think yeah. you should bring me in. I think so too. Do you think that that would be a fun? I think that'd be fun for the try guys to come in and solve people's problems on the road. That's mm. a, n- no, just me. Zach. Yeah. yeah Zach Keith, solves Keith, Keith, campus quarrels. He's over here yeah. plugging yeah. Lou Burger for college I shows. I and definitely look, am. Like sure. He's like <laughs> doing stuff to prep and like has yeah. quote unquote talent to showcase. <laughs> but that doesn't mean that I also can't come to right. your school and you could probably figure something figure out. it out. Uh huh. I could. Yeah. What, what Tell me I can't. I you, fully believe if they booked you for an hour, you could do something. No one's even tried. Yeah. No exactly. one's even tried. It's I weird. like this. Yeah. <laughs> what if you do a show? You show you up to cowards. the auditorium. You show up to the auditorium. You listening right now? <laughs> you, you're, you're a coward. You've what never you once you invited me anywhere. Tell your dad <laughs> yeah. to start selling a Daddy. show to colleges that's called Zach's coming. 
and, I like that. And there's no descri- and there's no description for the show. Zach's gonna figure it out. Yeah. Corn it's one me, night only. Zach Cornfeld live on stage. And a synth. Yeah. And I'm just gonna by the end of the show. An untrained synthesizer. <laughs> it's my untrained. <laughs> Your untrained artistic talent. Okay, wait, here's an idea. Yeah. Zach Cornfeld fi- figures it out. And each show, Ooh. I'm going to perform a new <laughs> thing. Ooh, it, yeah. You don't know what you're going to get, and neither do I. Maybe Juggling. this is the th- synth show. Clown. Maybe I have, yeah, clown. Maybe there's a full rock band. And they <laughs> and like, you know, we don't know what show we're going to get. It's, that's up to you guys and how much you're willing to shell out. That's okay? fine. Don't oh, so che- the cost of the show. Don't be cheap, motherfuckers. <laughs> so people are like auctioning off being like, do I have 20 for clowning? And someone's like 20. Oh, that's a good idea. Do I have idea. 40 for, for a rodeo Ooh. circus? 40. Well, I think you need to, do, you know, we're going to have to book this. this I think it's more like buying a mystery miles, bag. So <laughs> we're going to need to know ahead of time. All those people are mystery <laughs> box. The five hundred dollar mystery box or that thousand dollar mystery box. I love the idea of a mystery box type show. I'm even thinking you go to the auditorium and then the person says, "I have this boyfriend. I'm not sure if they like me." And then you take cameras. The cameras get projected up on the screen and you go live into the streets of the college town. You go to the boyfriend. You figure it out. Oh, I got a great game show idea just based off this whole conversation. It's called Buy My Box, and you've got (laughs) it's just a mystery box. You have no idea what the value is. Uh You have no idea what's in it. You just walk around and be like, "Would you like to buy my box?" And they're like, what's in it? It's like, I can't tell you. It's $5. This is a man on the street or? Okay. Man on the street and also a a live show on stage. And there's a thousand boxes. You're going to sell boxes to every member of the audience for different prices. And it it could be straight garbage. It could be a burden. Okay. Can I? It could be like a pet hamster. Can I yes and this? (laughs) Yeah. Okay. We're going to do it on a stage. Uh This is going to be fucking uh, uh, Howie Mandel with the case, the briefcase style. Okay. And you start with a budget. So you Should have we to, go in there and tell them? You know what? They're being loud. Down. I don't know they if you guys audience can hear that. that, but they're just yelling over our art. Ned's making milk. What is he doing? Yo, yeah, he's making ice cream or something. Oh. Some bullshit. One more, out, one more, <laughs> one more outburst out of them, and I'm coming in there and out talking to Rachel. Hey guys, you okay. just stoned us out. Excuse me. Um, excuse me. You guys, are, we can hear you. You're being very loud. <laughs> okay, so you start with a budget, right? Uh-huh. Let's just say you start with five hundred dollars sure. for playing. Got it. And then every box has a number or a consequence. So you can add or you can subtract, oh. but then also it'll be like, like, okay, you open a case. It's like $10,000. Holy shit. Wow. 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 This case, negative $5,000 and you're going to get pies just rocketed at you, you know, like very wacky. So they're going to take show. your money. They're going to take your money and run and the wacky game show uh-huh. antics uh-huh. where All they that. punish you. <clears throat> and then you need to kind of decide like, okay, I've got 20 K. I'm going to walk away Whoa. or right. you can risk it. Oh yeah, the biscuit. Yeah, I like Are you that. buying boxes each time too with their twenty k? That was part of my opening? idea, and I forgot about it. Yep, I you think, have to yes, buy boxes. You start out. Every player starts with five k. Yeah. Okay. And there are three boxes that all cost five k. And I think it should be different amounts. Different amount. Okay. Just yeah, randomized yeah, yes, amounts. Just, but all nothing above five k. Like once you have more money, you can start buying the bigger boxes. Okay. But there's like stages of boxes. You just have to have rounds. People like structure. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. It it helps explain the game. Who wants to be a millionaire? One question. People don't want to watch that. No, no, (laughs) no. no. We want to, I want to know that if I get to a certain threshold, I've secured my $25,000 and I could give up and go home. Yeah. Like that. But if I continue, at least I'm going to definitely make $25,000, even if I fuck up later. Yeah. Buy my box. But I do think just a man on the street mystery box would just say buy my box, and then you put a price on it, and then they open it and they see what they get. Yeah, and it's just totally random. I'm sure there's a YouTuber who does this as a one-off. Every YouTuber has done this like a one-off video, box. but just just that's the whole show. You get a guy, we hire a guy. That's his whole thing. He makes a show that's just called Buy My Box. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Have you seen? Um, do you know you met Chris Gethard show? Great mm-hmm. show. Mm-hmm. Awesome product on uh, public access TV in New York. I don't think it's on, but uh, great show. Very like revolutionary for like DIY type of entertainment. They did a great show called who's in what or no, it's what's in the box. Of course. And it was uh, Jason Manzoukas and Paul Shear, and they come on and they have, they are asking audience members. The audience members have to guess what's in the box. Mm-hmm. It starts out by they're just wondering what could possibly be in the box. And then they eventually peek in and they get to see what's in the box. Mm. And they are like, we can't reveal if this episode ends without somebody guessing what's in the box, we can't tell you and we'll never tell you. And that's like the goal. And so they are like, people start guessing and they start keep guessing and they keep guessing. And finally with like two minutes to spare, 
someone guess it says Paul Giamatti and they open the box and the entire time Paul Giamatti has been waiting wow. in, in the box. <laughs> Now, are they giving any clues at all? Or no, is it just, no. this is like a Wordle it's situation. Wordle. Yes, it's Wordle. <laughs> wow. And it's fucking in- incredible. And then for the credits, they play a GoPro of Paul Giamatti the whole show <laughs> sitting sitting in so that now box. If, if no one had said Paul Giamatti, <laughs> they wouldn't have we would have it. never known. Yeah, we have there known. must have been a plant in there to Beloved make sure we actor, saw it. Beloved actor, Paul Giamatti was... <laughs> the I person mean, who guessed it must have been a plant. Because the way that just, he does stuff, if it was in somebody else, Chris Gather does so, such weird fucking yeah. bullshit that, you know, I don't know. I think you want the audience. Of course you want the want to make so, the you want to make the TV show. They also good. did one where they like pissed their they drank water and then they pissed their pants and then they weigh the diapers and whoever had <laughs> whoever's diaper oh, weighed the most cool. for the whole show is like drinking water and wearing diapers and peeing their Trying pants. That, oh, so you have an hour to pee as much as possible. Yeah, it's really about how much water you drink before. That's true. Oh, uh, guys, let me tell you what I've been working out a lot lately. Yeah, okay. how's it going? Feeling good. I've. Muscle? You're looking at a boy on a four-day streak, Ooh. which is crazy town. What it's type really of working good. out? Is it yoga? Is it gym? No, 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 no. I'm I'm doing muscle building, baby. That's awesome. And, and what's happened is because I've been having these like nice productive days where I feel fulfilled, I get to the evening yeah. and I go, it's like seven or eight o'clock and we're like either going to watch a show and I just have found myself the last couple of nights being like, you know what? I want to listen to a podcast and work out. It's like become oh, yeah. something I'm looking forward to. That's how, yeah. And I think part of it is that I've been tracking my progress. You guys know I'm on this uh, weight gain journey. My goal was 15 pounds in a year. I have until March. I'm up 12 and a half pounds, baby. <gasps> Whoa. Whoa. We're doing it. And Whoa. I was looking at before and after photos. I, like, it's quite shocking. You're I can actually far. see like real change in my wow. physique and my posture is better. Wow. Uh, zero effect on my pain whatsoever. But, wow. uh, <laughs> but um, oh, you know, wow. whatever. And like, so there's something about, and here's another thing I've been doing is I have a, a column in my notebook where I've just been logging the dates when I work out. Yeah. And so when I work out, I just write today's date. And my goal was like, if I, I said, I need three months in a row where I hit three weeks, I, sorry, three months in a row where I work out at least three times a week. Mm-hmm. And it could even be a 20 yeah. minute rigorous workout, but right. that's what I got to yeah. do. And if I do that, then I'm allowed to t- get tatted, baby. That's, oh, <laughs> that's nice. the, the promise the I made price. to myself. That's fun. So now I've just like, I bribed myself. I have paired it with something that I enjoy, which mm-hmm. is listening to my podcast. And I reward myself at the end with a delicious sweet smoothie for a boy who doesn't have uh, sugar. And you get your gummy bears. And I get my gummy bears. So oh I'm living in Treat Town over here. It's really like good. Mr. Treat. But I am drinking a smoothie and having tons of water because I'm like exhausted. Right before bed. Right before bed. Every yeah. European. And so you talk about filling a diaper. Mm-hmm. It's like, okay, right before I brush my teeth, I pee. Brush my teeth. I get into bed and I go, well, I got to pee again. Yeah. I pee. Really? Then and Maggie's getting ready. And because yeah. it's just like, there's just so much there's liquid so much and my water. body's used to like, all right, before bed, you just pee, bro. We got this. Yeah. And so I am being so much right before wow. and it's a nightmare. Yeah. I could win that day. I mean, I pee the, pee the morning pee. It's a hurt. I hurt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, it's a full bladder so, where because I'm a water. I try to drink like a big, big gulp of water. And then when I'm waking up in the morning, I'm thinking, oh, it, like I almost I'm like, I can't go back to sleep right now because I'm awake. I have to piss. Yeah. I typically wake up and pee uh-huh. and then I kind of snooze for a bit and then yeah. I have coffee, but I have like two cups of coffee, which makes you have to pee like oh, crazy. Yeah, and then yeah, I pee yeah. again immediately. You get back into bed. That's yeah. interesting for me because I my coffee. Maybe it's my back too, though, that I don't want to lay back down because I know that then I'm going to get back up. So once I get the coffee going, I'm, I'm morning ready. is kitty cat cuddle time. I like that. I and c- coffee birdie, I and dog. Alfred on my lap yeah. and a little bit of wordle. I mean, come on now. I haven't fully embraced the wordle train it's yet. Fun. Now try doing that on a fucking scalding hot mat. <laughs> oh, I bet yeah. that's cool. The I've, cat would love it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Alfred would be down. The wordle train miles. It's great. I, I There was yeah. a beautiful article about how it's like the love story of the pandemic age. It's a time. It's a mm. solitary social game. Yeah. yeah, and it's this idea that you are alone. You're doing it's it fast. right, like we're all, and it's fast. It's easy. There's no barrier of entry. Right. And then the way that you can share results, it's geared towards social right. in a way that doesn't spoil the game for others. So I look. I mean, I've posted my results on Twitter once or twice <laughs> because I got it in two tries, two days in a row. Hey, very hey, cool. Hey. Oh, very, very cool. Fine. But very mostly, cool. Uh, Ned, Keith, and I have a thread mm-hmm. where I, we share our results. Yeah. And then uh, Kelsey, Lauren, and I and Maggie have a thread where we share oh, our cute. results, and it's like my peer to peer 
yeah. social media right now. That's really fun. I, I like, like it. We play also, a game every morning together. Every also, morning, the yeah, three of us play yeah, a game. And I like it because it's a little easy victory to yeah. start the day. Yeah. I like that. Because I think the game is not super challenging, although it has been tough, but I haven't lost it yet. <laughs> Knock on wood. But I, I think it is like a good... <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. What was that? He was getting his water. Oh, very cute. Um, I think it's a good like, because we were talking of several podcasts ago about developing habits and like little things that make your day better. Love habits. And I do like that Wordle is like this little easy uh, game that is social. I feel smart. Mm -hmm. And it's just like a fun thing to... It also like I think one of those things like wait oh you want to have something to look forward to when you wake up to wake you up like yep. Wordle like wakes me up real quick and it it starts your brain processing Thinking. uh huh I think um, it's good I think it's a good and uh, you know yeah puzzle. oh my god there are people that I know that they do it because it comes out at night we could do it before we go to bed no crazy that's so crazy what a waste a little what? morning treat uh, it's waste uh, over breakfast game do you know the guy <laughs> who made it his last name is Wardle. Wow. W A R D L E. That's his fucking name, man. Oh, wow. Similarly, I was I, <laughs> That's uh, crazy. I That's was crazy. Uh, listening to an episode of Defunct Land, which is like a mm. YouTube series. It mm -hmm. mostly goes over like theme parks that have yeah. weird backstories and how they happen. They were covering Pleasure Island, which was like the adult <laughs> bar area of Disney World for mm -hmm. a while. And I'm like, That's interesting. I was listening to it. And I was just halfway through was thinking about at the time when Walt Disney was alive, like it's just his name. <laughs> that he is probably was crazy. Disney because people were saying like nobody's ever done this before Disney. And at first I hear hear that thinking like oh yeah before Disney the giant conglomerate uh -huh. is like no they were meaning this guy. Yeah, that's crazy. And like the fact that this person is it's as if it was called Habersburger Land. Like yeah. and everyone's like oh I got to turn on Habersburger Plus and catch the Mandalorian. That it's just like crazy. it's kind of crazy to think that it's just a guy's last name. Right. That is this arguably the biggest brand on the planet. Yeah. Are there fortunate any Disney for, heirs? <laughs> yes, there are. But I was going to say also fortunate for them that it's such a unique and rare last name. It, it's yeah. not like Smith does, does it sound yeah. magical because it of its association or does the name already sound kind of magical? It's a good name. Disney. I, I've never heard that word Disney. outside of no. him. Right. I don't even know what its etymology is. Where does it come from? In the I don't world? know. Is it even a real name? Was it like he changed a last name somewhere along his life? Like it's it's very interesting to think about that because it was just like a guy's theme park. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Man with <laughs> and a he wild was like, vision. I made these crazy characters, and it's like, okay, dude. Okay, bro. <laughs> I love old <laughs> Disney stuff. Is someone you love in a relationship with somebody who tells the same joke over and over? Relationships, they're not perfect, okay? But that's why MeUndies is celebrating our imperfectly perfect matches with their new Valentine's Day collection. Every now and then, I try and secretly match underwear, MeUndies, with Maggie. Uh, it's such a funny surprise when we're getting ready for bed at the end of the night. Gifting underwear for Valentine's Day, groundbreaking. But gifting matching underwear for you and your significant other, and now we are talking. Express your one of a kind relationship when you match your bottom half to your better half in fun limited edition prints. And if you're single, mingle and matching pairs with your BFFs or maybe your family. You can, you can even get dog hoodies or buddy bands to match your four legged BFF. MeUndies has a great offer for our listeners for a limited time only. Get 25% off your first order of matching pairs for Valentine's Day. And as a first time purchaser, you can also get 15% off and free shipping right to your door. To get 25% off matching pairs, 15% off your first order, free shipping, and a 100% satisfaction guarantee, go to MeUndies.com slash TryGuys. That's MeUndies.com slash TryGuys. When our cats are healthy, they're happy, and that makes me happy. But since I'm not a mind reader, I don't always know what our little kitties want. Helping us know that our cats are healthy is just one reason why we love Pretty Litter. Pretty Litter's ultra-absorbing crystals trap odor instantly. No more cat bathroom smell. 
Pretty Litter is super light crystal base, also minimizes mess and dust. Plus, the crystals last up to a month, which means less scooping and fewer trips to the garbage can. Now, here's the coolest thing about Pretty Litter. It changes color to help detect early signs of potential illness in cats. Wow. Including urinary tract infections and kidney issues. And it gives you peace of mind, you know? Look, Cats are uh, notoriously coy, and so to have something that can help you read their mind, it's pretty helpful. Pretty Litter helps keep our cats healthy and keeps odors down. You and your cat are gonna love Pretty Litter as much as we do. Go to prettylitter.com and use code TRYGUYS for 20% off your first order. That's prettylitter.com, code TRYGUYS for 20% off. Prettylitter.com, code TRYGUYS. John Green did a thing of being like, if, you know, like somebody commented like, hey, just by the way, like, I love your book. It's my favorite book. And he was like getting emotional, just being like, by the way, this ma- like matters so much to me. Like the one comment, somebody being like, this is my favorite book. Like that was a book that I wrote and it meant a lot to me. And like, I hoped that one day it would be somebody's favorite. And I was like, that's, that's a good cool. point. Yeah, those Green Boys are cool. They're good people. Some teenage girls crashed my wedding. Really? They didn't cause any trouble. And like now looking back, I'm like, that's pretty cool of them. <laughs> I mean, that's cool. Do that you wish you could the... go back in time and let them party with you? No. They were, chil- <laughs> they were children. They were minors. They shouldn't oh, have been really? there. Yes. Oh, really? Yes. And their mother, I assume, brought them there. I don't know how on earth. How were they figured And you were like not in an easy to find place. It was like yeah, I don't know how they figured it out. They figured it out, but there was a you know, cornfield across the street. They shouldn't yeah. have been there. I never, I kind of remember some point seeing them like, I just kind of thought they were like some of the staff yeah, because there were young people on the right. staff. Uh, but I don't know. But they got out of there as soon as it's like, I think people caught wise to them and they realized it and then they were gone. Yeah. Were they wearing formal wear? I don't know. I don't really remember yeah. them. You had other things on your mind. Yeah, on your I was day. like partying. And they didn't come like until the party party started. Yeah, uh, right. So it was like when everybody's, we've already been drinking. We're Good switched into it. fun mode and everyone was really spread out. Yeah. And... So I think, though, eventually, you know, most people at that place knew who everyone was because there weren't yeah, very many right. kids there. Right. The only kids there were direct family members of Becky so and stick myself. Out. If so they you, stick out. If this was you and you were listening, tsk, 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 tsk. shame on you. But that also, said, pretty cool. Kind of cool. I mean, it's cool that you did cool for that. You. It's, it's, it's cool for me in some ways. I think it's funny. <laughs> like now that it's it's been enough time where I'm set right from at first I was like, oh, that's kind of freaks me out that people right, knew where right, we were right. and like yeah. maybe, you know, uh, it's dangerous sometimes when yeah, that kind of thing sure. can happen, certainly. But nothing bad happened. They, you know, I don't think they were able to get any alcohol as children there. Yeah. So like right. eh, it's okay. No harm, no foul. No and harm, I would no say foul. early in our career there were a couple of those run ins. <laughs> Like we got off a plane once and someone had figured out what flight it was going to be and was there waiting for us. And like, like five th- in the morning, we thought that was going to be There's more a of a eye. concern. That's weird in our lives. And yeah. I would say kudos to our fans for being cool. Cause yeah. you guys haven't like tried to figure out where we live and come to our doors and shit. And let's keep it that way. Cause that's a respectful boundary. <laughs> I will yeah. say sometimes I think because of the pandemic now that where sometimes you're out in the world again and people do see e- e- each other. Like somebody did see me the other day and maybe it wasn't the best way to handle it because they we were already on the plane and they were sitting behind me and they just s- screamed, oh my God, are you Keith Haversberg? But they said it uh, really oh, quite loudly. And if yeah. you're listening, it's okay. I'm sure that you were just overwhelmed in the moment. Yeah. It was um, so embarrassing when that happened because everyone turns and looks yes, like, the whole don't plane scream. looked to me and most don't people scream. don't know who I am. So that's like yeah. a second because then you have people just like, why is that guy famous? I'm like, oh, I'm not, I'm not, I mean, I'm probably not. Don't worry yeah. about it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Did you think about being like, no, but I hear I look like him. I no, I can't. Get it <laughs> you really, I'm it. also like sitting with, uh, Alex Lewis and yeah. So like, recognizable I, the best one though, that was very similar was we were on the shuttle from the rental car place mm-hmm. and they said, I hate when people do this, but it's fine if you do this. And they went, they did one of those like kick to see if I reacted. And then I did because I was like, did someone just say my name? And they're like, I thought it was you because I saw Alex and Alex brings the cookies. <laughs> that was how she 
explained Alex That's, and I together because Alex yeah. brings the cookies. He does. <laughs> just, he and always does. just explained that loudly on the bus <laughs> with Alex a bunch of other strangers again, a, a handful of old people who had no idea who we were. <laughs> and you just have one woman in the back screaming, oh, I knew it was you because Alex brings the cookies. <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's all. Yeah, and then she said, I anyway, I don't want to bother funny. you, but hi. I'm like, okay, fine. Love that. But it was, it tickled me a lot. Yeah. Because Alex wonderful. brings the cookies. Alex that. brings the cookies. And then BWO, who's, he was like in his headphones, who so he only heard, Alex brings the cookies. And he was like, <laughs> what's going on? <laughs> Yeah, they had such a funny one, but I don't want to embarrass this girl. Well, I, I probably just embarrassed two people. <laughs> Because I imagine the people who were that excited to see yeah. me probably listen to the podcast. But Perhaps. again, it was okay. I it didn't like I didn't think about it after yeah. that moment until right now. So it didn't like don't think I was like thinking about you all day <laughs> in, in your embarrassing moment. Because maybe you were embarrassed. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe you weren't. Maybe you were confident. <laughs> I went to a a concert. Uh, it was you know a little pre Omicron. It was right when I thought maybe we could do that again. Uh-huh. Uh, mm-hmm. And I got you know very stoned at the the concert mm-hmm. as is uh, fitting with this episode. And oh god. Uh, and so after the show, um, everyone you know everyone's going out the same direction. Right. Yeah. Someone spots me, very sweet girl and her mother. And so we're taking a photo. Uh, we're posing for a photo. And and this whole like we step off to the side but everyone's walking by us and we're yeah. in the parking lot and we happen to be like under a spotlight <laughs> so it's just like like just a sea of people are turning and looking and the mom couldn't figure out the camera oh. and so she's fiddling with it and i'm standing there and i by the way i'm holding this girl's poster and so i can't like cut and run like even if i want to you know yeah, i'm so right. in my head because i'm high and uh, <laughs> she's trying to take her her mask off. We're outside it's like to get a nice photo. Yeah. And her mask gets caught in her hair and in her earrings. And she she starts to pull oh, it. And I think no. that some of her hair came off. And then when she pulled it, her earring flew off. Oh, and it goes no. and it was a very cute like pe- like pendant. And it goes flying. And I go, okay. And I'm like, at this point, we're making a, co- at least in my stone mind, we've made a commotion, <laughs> right? Yes. And it goes flying. And she goes, oh no. And I'm like, oh, that's okay. We'll, we'll go get it after the photo. She's gone. She's going to get so it. So you're waiting. The earring yes, has yes. now rolled underneath a pickup truck. She gets down and crawls. Under oh the truck my goodness to get it and i feel so because it's just like the most mortifying thing yeah, that could rough. happen you should have just run i feel like i should have dropped run. it and run and i just again oh. in my stone mind this is the longest and worst thing that could ever happen to her could ever happen to me and the mom is still fiddling and i'm holding a big poster oh my <sighs> but we got the photo that's good that's exciting. And I, it's also, I was paralyzed, but in my mind, I was like, is anyone else seeing this? <laughs> this is crazy. It's like Final Destination. <laughs> this is cinema. <laughs> my, my funniest one was when we went to see uh, the wrestling. Uh, oh, just recent. Smackdown show. That was, it was just really funny because we were coming into the security. Two, I would guess, 10 to 12-year-old brothers and their mother came in and they were jacked. They were like dressed. Oh, they were really John- strong. Fuck yeah. <laughs> no, they were just so excited. They were like wearing one of them had like full John Cena, like supporting apparel. One have something awesome. else. They were like so ready. This yeah. is going to be the event of the day. <laughs> they come in and they're like, wait, are you? Oh, no way. Mom, mom, mom. We got, we got to get a picture with her. And she also then turns like, oh my gosh, we have to get a picture. And I was like, oh, this is so nice. And then like one of the kids goes like, I wish I could eat as much as you. That's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> and then the mom's like, I don't know how you do it. You eat so much. Oh, it's so like, cute. It was all about eating. It was <laughs> yeah. so funny. That's adorable. It was so funny and they were so excited. It's they were such like, a gift <laughs> that we get. Yeah. These, these interactions, <laughs> that one was spontaneously really bizarre sweet. interactions. <laughs> are. I just want you all to know they're as memorable for us as they are for they're, you. Some of them are really fun. They're, they're good. really fun. That's cute. I, uh, I, there was, I think Dave Letterman, I might be misappropriating this quote, but he said that for him being famous is like living mm-hmm. in a small town. Yeah. And uh, again, <laughs> yeah. we're not that famous, but it has given us the ability to have friends in mm-hmm. places where we shouldn't have friends. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's, it's quite nice. Yeah, that is really nice. I, I, I go from like, I love the just, hey, Keith. I'm like, yo. Yeah. Like yeah. that's a so, great occasional occurrence, which is really fun. And then sometimes it's like last night I went to a restaurant and the restaurant was dead. 
And I'm, I saw, I, you can normally see the look in someone's eyes when they register who you are. And our server, uh, very cool, very nice. And then suddenly we were being served by four servers. <laughs> <laughs> oh. You were just, you were king. Yeah. They were, they, first of all, they had, there was almost no one else at this restaurant. Right. We, there were literally, it was a place that could house a hundred tables. There were four. That's wow. Oh, wow. It, no one was there. Mm. And by the time we left, we were literally the only people there. <laughs> it was us. <laughs> And it was, they were very nice and chill. I mean, you get the yeah. name of that restaurant. That's yeah, great. it's right by us too. Cool. No one was there. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it was a very fun time. And it was, you know, everyone was cool. Everybody now, Miles, cool. Mm -hmm. life has changed for you in these last couple of years. That's true. But you've been inside. Yeah. So only recently has a little mouse emerged from his hole. Yeah, it is. I was just thinking that uh, it is, it has happened multiple times. Yeah. Uh, to get Miles been, Nation, or Miles are Nation. you Miles? I've been that people have recognized me. It said Miles you Nation. You bring the cookies. <laughs> you bring the cookies, which is very new for me, and also new and fun for my friends. Uh, oh yeah, which is probably like the most exciting part about it. But we went to for New Year's. I was in Denver, and uh, our barista when we landed was very sweet and recognized me and gave me free coffee. And it was just a, uh, it was a total delight. It's a, it's very fresh for me and very, it means a lot. Also, cause I was a barista and famous, yeah, famous yeah, people yeah. used to come in. Yeah. And I was like that, like I served wow. right full, full circle. circle. Yeah. That's a full circle. I, my friends are over it. Yep. Yeah. I've Our had. friends are over it. <laughs> my friends are like, what is, what is your job? Oh, like, I, I, say, I think the op further, not only are my friends over it, they resent it. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'd funny. say they maybe resent it unless we're getting like free stuff. Yeah, sometimes yeah, yeah. being with me means we get cool free stuff. Uh -huh. Sometimes it just means it slows us down. Yeah. And like we're now at the point where most of my like close friends and I don't it's fine that they do this. I'm like <laughs> I told, I I would rather them do this. Yeah. We're walking, someone stops taking a picture of me, they just keep going. Oh, yeah. they'll keep going. And yeah. I've got to catch up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll fair. catch up later. And I'm like just go on without me. It's cool. <laughs> this I this could take 10 seconds, it could take 3 minutes. I don't You're know right. how long this interaction will be. But I'm here. <laughs> this was a uh, months ago, but I was catching up with college friends. One was mm -hmm. in from out of town, so like yeah. we hadn't seen each other in a while. And we were uh, getting dinner on like a curbside. It was the summer, so it was still light out. Uh, and someone <laughs> walks by, not stopping, just goes, "You're a legend, suck." <laughs> yeah, I love those That's like very cute. Those drive by I, screams or something like that. Are great. And, and like <laughs> on the legend? one hand, I turn, I'm like. What can I say? But on the other hand, they all what looked at me I? and they were like, you're a fucking douche. This is getting to your head. <laughs> Fuck you. That is my college friends are our best for just trying to constantly put me down. And yeah, that's, that's yeah. what I need. That's I, what all my strongest relationships yeah. should be about putting me back in <laughs> uh <-huh>. my place. <laughs> Everyone fair. in my it's life true. just needs to discourage me at all times. Yeah. To keep me, keep, keep you me a good person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Keep you human. <laughs> I want to be a terrible one. Seems so fun. Well... <laughs> It's that time again. Mm -hmm. Anyway, it's time for everybody's favorite segment. It's advice to go for miles. The miles, Bonsignore. You tell me the BPM of this. I can play the synth to it. So miles much. was your average guy. <laughs> <laughs> Just fucking hanging out and slaying ass. <laughs> Until one day, he responded to a job posting, <laughs> making him ultra fuckable and cool. <laughs> But uh oh, <laughs> what Miles doesn't know won't hurt him. <laughs> you only get Go. one shot. Do not, not miss your chance to blow. This opportunity comes once in a lifetime. Give it up. But now he's got to juggle two jobs and a robust veterinary business. <laughs> There's no way he's gonna pull it off. You better. Go. Lose, lose yourself, you gotta lose yourself go. in the music. The go. moment you go. own it, you gotta never let it go. Coming to Fox this fall. Fuck town. Fuck town. Do not <laughs> miss your chance to blow. What's up, Miles Nation? How's everybody doing? <laughs> you should have had a hard out, not a fade out. <laughs> Sorry. Everybody knows that ends with a bounce. You want, you want to try it again? No, <laughs> no, no time. <laughs> Let's bring it back. But I want to. Before you get into it, you had that at the ready, but you weren't going to do that today because we decided we were doing two podcasts, and you didn't do that the first podcast. <laughs> yeah. So you had that Keep at the out. ready, and you <laughs> were not going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I because I was going with the moment of the first podcast the we did synthesizer. the synthesizer, True. and I was like, actually, this moment's going to be better if we just let the synthesizer rock. 
I uh, I've discovered something by sitting over here. We switched chairs, yes, which yeah. means that I have view of the the, the, the board, the monitor, <laughs> yeah. and yeah. Miles has what seems to be a tweet that's open with a button. No, 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 move that. You have a bunch of tracks. Yeah, yeah. I noticed you oh, had like no, a little no, no. Sound this is a, I just had. I was just looking at Twitter before you guys. Sure, 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 uh -huh, sure. So uh -huh. Miles has tweeted. There's a secret Twitter oh, account somewhere <laughs> with a bunch of soundtracks. <laughs> I actually did think about starting a fake Twitter account, like not a fake, but just a second Twitter account that's really stupid. Mm. But yeah. then I was just like, my main Twitter account so stupid, but maybe the second would be stupid. I tweet more. What if? Maybe. What if you? Miles after dark pre-record a bunch of mild nation miles nation like the whole year's <laughs> worth of them? miles nation tweet them on a burner account user two five six also <laughs> tweets out some cryptic things and we will have hints very secretly. I mean, Wait, this that's is fun. A hard challenging cryptogram. Yeah, scattered throughout our episodes uh -huh. and so then people can find it and if they catch the grease boy <laughs> Oh, this is actually a fun internet puzzle. It a is. QR code inside of Eat the Menu on like a cup. Uh huh. And that links to a tweet from 2001. <laughs> Somehow, yeah. so I've, been on, <laughs> I've been working on this for a while. <laughs> Before Twitter, okay, cool. <laughs> What's up, Miles Nation? How's everybody doing tonight? We're good. Uh, you, you're thanks good. for having us. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You guys want to do another episode after this? <laughs> <laughs> Keep rolling. Keep on doing. Got else 24 to do. hours of episodes. The 24 hour potathon. You're gonna have to crack another weed soda. That's actually is that a, is that a format where it's like today we call the podcast whatever the date the is. The date is and it's, it's 24 over hours. the next 24 weeks. We're gonna release a full day of That's content, and we funny. just we yeah. get further and further into insanity. Mm -hmm. It's not a bad idea. It's pretty good, and it'd be very efficient. It'd be super Get efficient. 24 episodes, almost half the year. That's right. We just, it's two days a year. <laughs> That'd be really good, actually, for us. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right, what's your advice? No! <laughs> you want to do it? And you want to make it stinky? Nope. You want to have your hands covered in sticky residue? It's always Closer. stinky and sticky. You want your hands to be you want to pop a thousand zits with the power of a single atom bomb. And you want to do it at a reasonable price. Okay, sticky hands, zit popping. Look at sticky hands. Beat. Does the name Tangelo mean anything to you? Tana Mojo? No, but that would be kind of a good name if Tana dated Angelo. Yeah. <laughs> 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 it would be Angela Lopez. <laughs> <laughs> Angela. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for listening to the tribe. I've everybody. been having <laughs> Angelo, and it's a type of citrus with Trader Joe's. <laughs> oh, it's a fruit. Well, it's a fruit, and. <laughs> 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 and uh, don't put the cart before the horse, but uh, yeah. it is a fruit and it is sort of like an orange, but it's a little more sour. I assume it's similar to a tangerine. As <laughs> <laughs> well, well, it's a tang, a love. But a tangerine's kind of hard to peel, I've found. Too little. Is it? Yeah, uh, the skin is papery and little. Uh, yeah, I don't eat oranges or almost anything of the orange family. Well, yeah. Because they hurt my tongue. And they hurt my mouth. Really? Mm -hmm. I have like, I bought like a big, delicious. big bushel of them and I ate them all in two days. And I don't like that they make your hands smell like oranges oh, for see, a day. Oh, see, I love that. Yeah, I okay. love the smell of citrus. And in fact, I've actually been thinking recently, what if I burned the citrus and I sort of combined it into a carbon candle? Didn't, uh, isn't Becky doing that thing where you dehydrate it? You dehydrate, put yes. cinnamon on it yes. and you, your house smells just lovely. Well, she doesn't. I don't think she puts cinnamon on it. She might. Uh, she just um, puts, yeah, oranges sliced into the oven and slowly dehydrates them. That's and then fun. we put them in drinks, like mostly mocktails right now. I learned that on this podcast. Yeah, I bet you did. <laughs> the episode that came out? Yeah, a few <laughs> weeks ago. <laughs> I don't think there was cinnamon on it, but she might. I don't know. But I thought Angelo is a good sort of hybrid between a lemon and an orange, and it's easy it's to a good hybrid easy to peel. You want Canada a hybrid Lopez. between a lemon <laughs> and an orange? <laughs> yeah. It's like sweet and sour. It's like a little gummy. Like bear. a Granny Smith apple like of a Granny oranges. Smith apple of oranges. Mm, and you bite right into that rind. And it's <sighs> real juicy and tender, and there's no fucking bullshit seeds in it. Oh, there's no seeds. No seedless. 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 But I, I think Trader Joe himself invented it. 
because I've never seen it anywhere else. There's a lot of families of citrus. fruits and vegetables. They're kind of I just out, love out citrus. Control. I'm a citrus bitch. You'll never get jaundice then. What's you, that? Never what? You'll never get jaundice then. That's true. <laughs> Is that a threat? <laughs> he said that like a threat. I can get well, jaundice. You tell me I can't. He can if he keeps eating yeah. citrus at that pace. I Challenge think, accepted, bitch. It's basically a vitamin C deficiency. Is so. citrus bitch a good like merch line? Citrus bitch. Actually, citrus yeah. Bi- I'm a little citrus bitch. Yeah. Sounds like a good um, like, seltzer I think brand. Lip smackers flavor. I think Maggie would self-identify as a citrus bitch. And in fact, next time you ask, you see her on You Can Sit With Us, say, yeah. hey, Maggie, are you a citrus bitch? Yeah. <laughs> I think she's going to say, hell yeah, yeah bro. Hell yeah, yeah. If you're out there and you're a citrus bitch, let me hear you say, oh, yeah. Oh. yeah. There you go. I think that we should call it Sunday Fun Day. And the first episode is 9 a.m. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And we just fucking go, baby. Yeah. The uh-huh. marathon. You know, yeah. We come in. Maybe we should start at noon so everybody can get as much sleep as possible because mm-hmm. they have to go all the way to noon. That's true. But we'll get another but second also, like, fuck it. We could do 12 nine, hours. 18 episodes. Yeah. We could, yeah. We just crank do. it out half the year. Yeah, One dude, day, eight, day. 18 three times, it get pretty much be the year. Sunday fun day. Yeah, that's fun day. Sunday. Sunday. Comes out on Sundays. Yeah. Yeah. The uh, Lord's Day. Me and my friends did that. Like when we were just graduated from college, we did, it, it was called DF, it was like our uh, thing, we were called Danger Friends. And it was like, we present Harry Potter. <laughs> I'm sorry? We present Harry Potter over 24 hours. And so we watched Harry Potter. We watched all eight movies over 24 hours and we made a podcast after each of them for 30 minutes. Yeah, that's a good way to release them. So it was like time passed. There you go. That's a good way to do things. It's fun. If We'd you like guys it. want Sunday fun day, you got to let us know. You got to be loud about it because we <laughs> will forget about <laughs> you gotta it. You got to be loud we about it. We forget. just came up with it. We'll forget. We're, we already forgot. I this, this will mean nothing to me in about 20 minutes, but it's a great idea. Sunday fun day, Hyundai. We could sort of do a by, sponsor. Sponsored by Hyundai? Sponsored by Hyundai. Oh. Or Toyota. <laughs> Whoever bids better. Or probably some sort of like caffeine drink. Mazda. Sunday fun day brought to you by 24 Toyota. hour Yerba Yerba Monday is a day Monday. Yeah. Yerba Monday. Yerba Monday. I guess also like we just take slips, uh, shifts and some people could sleep through a podcast. Oh, that's a good just idea. Just like you have two guys talking and two people just sleep <laughs> on camera. And then you wake them up. You're like, you got you to do the next episode, man. That's what fun. were you dreaming about? <laughs> I was thinking we should do site specific episodes like from your car. <laughs> Hashtag bring back Sunday fun day. Let's get a change.org Hashtag petition going. Bring back Sunday fun day. You know there's a change.org decision to have the judges reevaluate my loss in the gingerbread episode. Yeah, which is it's just fucking hilarious. bullshit. It's hilarious. There's been more controversial losses than it that. It really has, but it's really funny. Fucking <laughs> that, that enough people <laughs> have signed it. Where were you at Bagel Gate? Yeah, Bagel Gate. Where was were good. you? <laughs> Bagel Where Gate the was pretty fuck good. Where were you? That's true change we can believe in my ass <laughs> fucking you take your dot org. org and you shove it damn right everyone damn. wants me to be evil next season <laughs> like, like a villain yes like, like your revenge the, season. yes they think that this uh, season is this the, your is villain the, origin story yeah the origin story i would like, say the like, whole show has been your villain yeah origin but i guess story. i'm like i'm down to figure that out i don't know what i would do to be villainous the only thing i could think of is to be a cheat <laughs> Just actually use a recipe. Cheat just time. tell Rachel in my thoughts if she has to keep a secret. Like I'm looking up recipes. I'm, just, season, <laughs> I'm looking up recipes because I still will probably not win. That's like, I can still make a mistake. Well, you, know? you just have to memorize a recipe, yeah. what which is, is often what I think that, and then I have to you, pretend that I don't know, and the whole audience will know that I do know. But what if they can, <laughs> if they can sniff out the recipe reader, they can vote one off. If everybody votes for the same, everyone recipe knows reader? that one of us cheat. We all know that one of us is cheating. <laughs> yeah, and <Whoa>. you can- <laughs> it's like fucking mafia. And there's one cheater per episode. Well, like no, but but it could be the same person twice because yeah. otherwise you would just know by the fourth episode. And then you would just, yeah, that's really interesting. Like okay. if their cake is too good. There's this new card game where, oh, fuck, I forget what it's <laughs> called, but you're like all trying to lie about what location you're in and you're asking questions. It's yeah. like if we're all at a bank, I'm the oh, security right, right, card. Right. You're the bank teller. You're the robber. Right. And so I'll be like, what's the weather today? And you'll be like, the weather's of no importance to me because we're inside. Like I'm trying to figure out where we are. Oh, right. And one of us is the secret I was pretending they also know where I'm trying to just like go along with it. Uh And we played around me and my buddies where none of us were. And it got heated. It was like, he's the fucking liar. And none of us were. We just for we just miscounted the cards. Oh, that's so (laughs) fucking funny. We were all telling the truth and 
it it tore us apart. That's really funny. I played a mafia game once where someone was like, uh, I'm the fortune teller. And then somebody else was like, I'm also the fortune teller. And then both of them were like, they're not the mafia, like to each other. It was really fucking confusing, but it was like the there's two a fort- fortune teller. Mafia? Yeah, there's sometimes and sometimes there, there can be a fortune I've seen teller that, that are like they can ask if one person's the mafia, but then they can also if they ask if they make it clear to the fortune teller, the mafia is going to kill them because they're going to be va- voting for that person. Right, but uh, so they got each other. The two fortune te- there were two fortune tellers. There weren't, but somebody was like, "I'm also the fortune teller," and that person's not the mafia. It was like, and you were like, "Wait, but how? Why are there two fortune tellers?" And they were just like, "I don't know. I don't know why there's two fortune tellers." Because one of them was probably the mafia. Because one of them wasn't the mafia one of them was just vouching for the fortune teller it was very confusing wow like, that's weird it was high level gameplay i love mafia weird that's my favorite you want to play right now we did we did do this one time <laughs> but we were, it was <laughs> you it was you three and i just said one of you were the mafia and there was yeah, no round and i just talked about how i hate playing these <laughs> yeah, of games. you just had to be like why are you the mafia well, i'm not the mafia because i'm fucking not the mafia <laughs> i think that moment showed that yes we are out of ideas <laughs> and confirmed that at the second i leave this room Everything that happened in here stays in here, baby. That's right. Hashtag bring back Sunday fun day. I'm telling you, site specific, we do one in a diner. I'm down. It's going to be a lot more work for you. I definitely. <laughs> <laughs> so we, hold, we sort of did this On so we mountain. didn't have to yeah, set no, up we built, every single time. We built the whole studio. <laughs> we yeah. did this to not do that. You should have done it in a truck. Oh, so it could be traveling circus. Yeah, traveling circus. Truck pod. What if we rent a U-Haul? Put the podcast. I, I put all this shit in the U-Haul and then we just take this baby or like road. a 12 passenger van or something. I'd like to yeah. do it on a mountain range. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. What if we do one? Yeah. On a mountain range. It's real introspective. Hmm. Let's end the episode. I think. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Good. <day. laughs> oh my God. Keith hit us with the German tripod theme song. You come to a tripod to have a good time. <laughs> We have a good time on the tripod. Wow. You have a good time. You have a good time. <laughs> you have a good time. You have when been you're listening to the tripod. You have been listening, listening to, to the, the tripod. tripod. You, you have been listening been to, to the, the tripod. tripod. This is quite bad. I, I thought it'd be really good. Until next time. I am beautiful. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs>